Welcome to Michigan Mud Mechanic. I got rid of my old camper for various reasons. I picked this one up cheap, um, and that's because it needs some things. So please like and subscribe, and let's get this thing ready to go camping. All right, so we have hot water issues. It's kind of windy. I hope it doesn't mess up my audio. This looks like it was leaking. You'll see that when we get to the hot water heater. So we got a new pressure release valve. This completely destroyed itself. Um, so we got a new hose, new fittings, not actual fittings. I had to reuse those. I couldn't find them anywhere. The anodizing rod, completely gone. Um, and the burner was, it's missing that little guy there. And um, I got a short video that shows that it kept burning back here, not up here. So let's get the hot water heater taken care of first thing. All right, can you hear that? It's not right. It's burning. There we go. See, that's what it should sound like. It's burning up front there. But then, if I wait long enough, which I'll probably skip it out. There it is. Blow it out. Yeah. All right, we're going to turn it off. We're going to replace this tube. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow all this out. Got my stickers here that somebody... I've blown this out before, but you know, then I stripped everything off and it looks like it's easier to get to. And there's still a lot of stuff. Okay, maybe not, not as much as I thought. Alright, so it's all rusty like that because of the pressure valve leaking. And the other thing is, is I had to redo the shape of this thing. So, let's see if we can get it all in there. Make sure I get this in so we know we're all lined up where we need to be. That tightened. I didn't bring no. I didn't bring no tools to tighten anything. Isn't that awesome? All right, let's get this thing set up. Should be something like that, and something like that. This thing completely annihilated itself when I was. Trying to figure out what was wrong with everything. Something ain't right there. I'm not sure. Is that how, yeah, that's how I wanted it. Alright. Just need to get you started. Get that one started. I don't feel like I got enough line there for this one. Pushing that thing all the way to the end of that line and I'm not that happy about that. Let's see how it works out. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I think we're okay. I'll just make sure I'm pushing that line in at the same time. And we'll tighten that one first. Um, might as well go ahead and slide the old anodizing rod in. Wanted to start with the hot water heater first so I can fire it up and make sure that everything is working properly. Alright, let me uh yeah. Let me go get the tools. We need a wrench, socket. I don't remember how I got that in there. Well, we almost got this part done. Alright. 
So I'm hoping that I got the right wrench here. There we go. And then I want to make sure that that's pushed in good while I tighten this. already not trying to move so I think we're gonna be in good shape just gotta make sure I crush that brass sleeve I think I'm good wrong way make sure you turn it the right way oh wait wait it goes this way uh. Waited a long time for the, all the parts to get here to do this. Yeah, okay. Long time for someone like me that's impatient. So I got rid of my old camper because it was considered scrap and it didn't have a title. It wasn't legal to tow down the road and I overall could just use a bigger camper. I like it. Okay. I didn't bring out a socket because I, I've always just tightened these things this way. a lot stiffer and I'm used to them being my old camper you know was brand new and I didn't camp a lot whoever owned this camper before me used it a lot Or they just let that pressure relief valve just leak for no real good reason. None of these parts broke the bank or anything, you know. The electric side of this hot water heater does not work. And if it does, it takes an extremely long time. Now, looking at that, it looks like there's a taper on it, so it should tighten as it goes in and it should seal as it goes in, but I'm going to put some of this tape on it anyway, because I have it, so why not? And in the hole. Let me get my head out of the way. There we go. It says do not remove this tag, but hopefully it don't melt. Okay. So, we can actually turn on the water. Let's turn on the water and check for leaks. Scream if you see anything. Nothing leaking yet. Make sure no faucets are on inside. Yep, there was one faucet on. Yeah, I don't hear. I don't hear no. All right, everything looks good. Not leaking from anywhere. All 
Alright, uh, this, this has got to go back on. like that extension that gives you on the screwdriver. Goodness. And that's it. What do you say we, uh, you say we fire it up and see if she lights. Still, yeah, you're still recording. All right, let's see how she goes. What a beautiful sound. I don't know if you can see it. So beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to sit back. I'm going to watch this thing. I'm going to make sure I get hot water and stuff like that. And then uh, I'll turn the camera back on for the next project. All right, so that didn't work. The pressure relief valve started leaking. It says at 210 Fahrenheit, it's going to leak. So I pulled this cap off from here. And I've ordered both of these new thermostats. Because for some reason they're not shutting down. Uh, I ordered a new switch for the electrical end. I tested the electrical element, so I mean, I figured if I'm going to go in, I might as well go all in, and we'll get the electrical end of this working too. Or we're going to fail again. You know, stick around to find out. Oh, I'm ordered a new valve too, just in case these solenoids are bad. I just want to be done with it. We replace everything. If this ain't it, then it's inside the camper. But this should do it because it's turned on just fine. All right, so we'll get back to the hot water heater. I ordered in some more parts for that. We'll have hot water. We just got to turn it on and off ourselves. Moving on to this power jack. Well, it's going to be a power jack. It's not just missing off the bottom. It's folded and rolled over. The reason this is stacked up so high is that's how the, that's how the higher goes. Most of, most of the pipe is missing. So we got this. And it comes, you know, obviously with the handle for the hatch, or the handle to go in the hatch, and, whoop, just in case you don't have the power. But, I, I mean, they are nylon nuts, or should I just reuse these? Because I don't know if I want to drill out the holes, you know? There's no nuts on these. I just, I don't think I want to... If I drill out the holes, I'm going to have to check to make sure I don't lose any nylon nuts like ever. I'm just going to reuse these bolts. Let's, uh, let's say that those jacks will, will hold the camper, right? And let's find out. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay. Alright, let me get you guys on a tripod. We'll get this done. I am going to guess 12 millimeter. Oh, they're bigger than that. Let's go standard 9 16 <laughs> All right.
tension driver. Check wheel lugs and tire pressure before moving this vehicle. Oh, I should have read that the first time. <laughs> so it appears that it is so messed up that it don't want to come off. All right, wait right there. I'll be right back. All right, I got my problem solver. I would uh, I'd prefer not to cause any extra problems. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's grease. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Problem solved. All right, I gotta pull the feed off. Good. These bolts are plenty long enough. I am gonna. I am gonna steal these washers because I can. Actually, Turns out they're the same same bolts. I think the washers were maybe supposed to be on the other side for them nuts, but I just don't like it. There we go. Alright, so then we put this guy back. Oh, it's greasy. Uh. 
so clearly I gotta back my truck in okay now we got it what uh oh Alright guys, I believe that guy's blown right there and it says stud one. So I think this is just the wire that goes all the way back to the trailer hitch. Let's pull that out and swap it with something and see if that hitch will work. Alright, so I pulled the 40 out of here and put it over here. Let's go see if that helps and then I better get to the store and get a new one. Um, there's a light. Yep, we got light now. Oh yeah. Nice, okay. Installed. All right, so on to the next little project. What we have is a bent hinge, these things don't move. It uh, started started to pull the door apart. I'm sure you can't see from there. So we got ourselves a new hinge here. There's our new hinge. Um, I had to drill these holes because you can see these ones were riveted and had to be cut off. Um, yeah, let me see if I can zoom you in. There you go. About the best I can do. Um, let me grab all these old screws. I'm going to attach it to the back to the door. One of them, that one goes to the screen. thing is uh, be a little more difficult than, the, than I thought. Is that how that goes? That's not how that goes. I got this thing upside down. Yeah. Wow, so we gotta be Real careful with where everything is at. Oh. Well, what do you know? Moved it around a little bit. And it found itself. Oh, that's why these are square bit screws. I am sorry. Yes, sir. Now, 
the original holes were straight, I put them on an angle and figured that my good old self tappers should be just fine. There we go. There it is. Nice. Yep. So I really wanted to get the hinge back on there. The door was working fine without it because there's two other hinges. But I was afraid that it was going to leak because the seal had already been formed around it. Plus it's supposed to be there. It might as well be there. Screen door is working just fine too. Very nice. All right. So you can see before I took the hinge off, before I took the hinge off, it was hitting really hard right there from these screws. And now, to, now those screws are nowhere, they're nowhere near that frame. That thing was bad. Couldn't move it at all. It still can't. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, all right. So I really did think that that's all that was going to take to fix this. The fact that it's not shutting down and this started leaking again. I did order parts, but I guess my dilemma is. I kept my hot water heater out of my old camper. I mean, this thing here, I basically ran on the electric side of it. Never had an issue. Um, do I continue to work on that one, or do I just throw this one in here? Well, I guess me having this here right now tells you that I'm just going to go ahead and throw this one in the camper. So, let's get set up, and let's do that. Alright, so I've cut this off. The ring cut the ring off you take the long screws out that go right here there's three of them the one goes up there the one over here and then this ring will come off some of them come off really hard this one came off very easily so let's uh let's go inside get the water lines disconnected oh actually i got to get this gas line disconnected and then we should be able to pull this thing forward you gotta get that disconnected, and then we should be able to pull this forward. Yeah, we're gonna go inside. All right, I gotta get that bottom one off. It's cold water in, and the top one is cold water out. Pull them off, and we'll be able to slide this thing out the hole and disconnect the electrical part of it. Oh. Connect these these husky vice grips, I do believe. Have cutters. So I'm leaving little pieces on here. So I know which wire goes to what. There we go. All of this should come out with the hot water heater. And then once I have it out, on the outside there is when you can disconnect. Oh yeah, you gotta disconnect the 110 from out there. All right, and disconnect this gas line. pocket what bottom are I spent a bunch of money on these parts I'll absolutely be keeping all of these parts too
Don't don't forget to turn off your uh, propane tanks before you disconnect your gas lines. Imagine it's still gonna hiss a little bit. Yep, it stopped. Take this rubber grommet and just shove it to go through the hot water heater. You're never going to push that nut through that grommet. And if you do, you worked at it way too hard. It's so much easier to just let that grommet go. But this, <laughs> somebody like glued it on there. Oh, they, they caulked everything to try to make sure no, no bugs or anything could crawl in through the hole. And it's, what it's done is it's glued itself to this hot water heater. Yeah, so that's really weird what they did here. They tied the 110. I've got to try to get... You see that? They clamped. They clamped the 110 line on there. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to have to try to get that screw out from the inside. We'll be back. All right, so this hot water heater had had a, well, I'll show you. I had to strip it off from that one. So this looks like some kind of DC shutdown for the, to shut off the AC for the electrical end of this hot water heater. The camper is wired to have that. So I didn't know if not having that was gonna cause a problem. So I went ahead and added that to this hot water heater, which is a matter of the black wire going to the switch. And then this ground, one of the yellow grounds, and it added this orange wire back in. So now I have all four wires to hook back up, and we can start installing this hot water heater. So let's go get it into that cubby hole over there. Pinch any wires. see any of it but it's just a normal wire job there's the ground white to white black to black no big deal but I don't have no wire nuts over here I have to find some right, let me find what I did with the wire nuts
There it is. She's in. All right. I believe it's my dinner time. I forgot to hit record. We got it filling up with water. We're watching for leaks right now back there. Sorry if you can't see, I'm trying to use the light so I can. Everything looks good. And sounds like the water just stopped. All right. Let's get the air out of the lines. A lot of air. Cold still good. It's got a little air in there. Oh, don't want to put too much water in there though. Jeez. All right, all right. Make sure there's still no leaks. See if she'll fire up on the on the gas side of things. Uh, gas oh, right here. So I don't know why this camera won't focus. Come on, camera, focus in now. All right. So here's your gas. Let's go see. Trying to light, there it goes. So it lit. So we know the gas side of this one. I mean, this hot water heater is brand new. It was in that new camper that I bought, and it's only been used a handful of times. Um, on an app, it's been used under 20 times. So this thing should be completely brand new. It came out the same year, 2012. It's just, I bought that camper as scrap and everything in it was brand new and never been used. As soon as I realized it was a Suburban, the same thing, might as well just swap out the whole thing. Now I got a bunch of new parts for it. And the other one was working, but there was just too much settlement in it. Um, this hot water heater's never had a chemical in it. I've always only drained it using the anodizing rod. So, that's good. She's all done. We just need our bug screens for it. Oh, and you gotta make sure that it's inside of that. <sighs> One handed. There we go. All right, hot water heater done. Okay, so one of the reasons I got the camper so cheap was because there's water damage here in this outdoor kitchen. And you can see it in, you can see it in all the, the tabletops. Easy enough to replace these things. I'm not that concerned with that. And I asked them if they knew if the leak had been corrected 
because the floor is a little soft too. And they were told, or they didn't know that there was any water damage when they took this thing in on a trade. So what we're gonna do, so we'll leave the camera in here and we'll close the door and we'll see if we're getting any water. Alright, so I've got it all dried up. You can clearly see that the seal needs to be replaced. You can also see that the door's got a warp to it, so we're going to have to get some fat foam. And that not having that other shock is really hurting us. So let's replace the shocks since we got those. Alright, so I'm missing one of these. I'm missing one of these down here and it just so happens that it's supposed to be let me grab the camera here it's supposed to be long uh, like a long shaft on it and you can clearly see that yeah that's so long so what I've done is I've taken one of these uh, you can see it there you go I ground this rivet part off and pop the ball out of it once I'd done that I put or I tapped the hole threaded that out threaded it in there put a couple welds on it so it can't come back out and then just welded the ball back to the end of the bolt with my little booger box because I don't have a good welder so you didn't want to see all of that but let's see if that works I also want longer screws than what came with these because obviously it's been pulled out of over there. So let's go grab some longer screws. All right. I want to get a closer look at it. All right, it's not the prettiest thing, but it's on there and it's solid. Let's get a shock in here, and then we can replace that one because I bought two. I don't know what length that one is. Here's our two new shocks. I'm wondering if uh, I wonder if this bracket broke on the last people. These should just clip on. Yeah, just like so. Yeah. Oh, that's that's very. All right. So this other one I'm gonna leave in here as a spare. We'll probably put it in the front cubby. Let's. Oh. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's much nicer. It's nice and straight. I mean, it's still got that bow to it, and I think that's why we're leaking. So now I've got to run up to our local Home Depot here and see if I can't find a... See if we can't find another a D seal that will fit properly. And I want to try to get these dents out of this it's really dented up down here pretty bad so gotta figure out what I want to use to get all this goop off we'll be back alright so you can see the black on here is the original seal so that stuff that I pulled off was somebody else's attempt to seal this up um, I may not have bought enough. I might have to go back for another one. 
this is what I'm going to try to use. It expands out to half an inch. Um, this track is all bent. It's all over the place. Now I bent these in to make the latches pull in harder. So now when you when you turn this latch, it's it's trying it's trying to pull the door shut more. Nothing I can do about the warp in that door. We ain't going through all of that. We're gonna we'll try this and then we'll put the camera back in here. Here we go. I wiped this all down with uh, rubbing alcohol. So you can see where I ended, that's where I started. So we're going to give it some time to expand out, it says it expands out to a half an inch. And then uh, we'll see uh, how it goes. We'll put the camera back in here. Alright, I'm in the camper, it takes an hour for that foam seal to expand so we're going to wait and then I'm going to close the door. And then we'll spray some water at it. See if there's a, any other uh, leaking we need to address. In the meantime, let's see what we got left in this box of goodies here. Um, these are for the refrigerator to keep the bugs out of the outside hatch thing. So we got to do that. These are the screens for the heater and hot water heater so we got all that to do um, we can I got a new poop tube we can get this put in place while we wait for that to expand uh, oh that's just to air out the lines at the end of the day I got a bunch of hot water heater parts in here of my attempt to fix the other one and I stopped but I still had you know, parts on the way like this gas valve we'll just leave them in the camper we just have extra parts now and then we got the stops to the bumper so okay let's uh let's go take care of this real quick we'll get that out of the way that'll make this box a lot easier to deal with won't it yeah poop tube let's go all right so this is a new one because i was like hey you don't have one in there and this is what they gave me and <laughs> yeah that ain't gonna work so it should slide right in there for me this one actually forms a shape good for camp actual campgrounds together <laughs> oh there's air in it wow those things seal up good don't they there we go yeah that made it easier all right now we'll put the cap on it There we 
go. And then and it's gonna need one of these. There we go. That's all taken care of. This we'll do something with that. Alright, that's that side. There we go. New bumper caps. Alright, got the refrigerator vent here. And these have to go on the outside. They have to go on the outside. They don't they don't fit properly on the inside. So that's what the zip ties are for. I'm blind in trying to do this. Oh boy. Alright, this is gonna take forever. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go into superhuman speed. Don't tell anybody. Oh man, so I didn't do every one of them, but they definitely give you enough zip ties to do every one of them. I did, on accident, I skipped one, started here, skipped three, started there, then I realized that that was a really good pattern. So, better be lucky than good. Every time. I got two more to do. Like that, no buggies get in there. Well, no stinging kind of thing. We're gonna go back into uh, superhuman speed. Quite a bit. I've uh, I've had these before. These go on with springs. I didn't even know they made these, but I found a whole kit that came with it, so I figured why not. Let's get all these little tails cut off, and we'll get this thing put back in place. All right, grab these black things. Now this is some kind of drainage tube that was pulled all the way through. A slot. Let's 
So I was wondering if I should cut out a slot. But I think I can just press it up against any one that I want. Oh yeah, I see it right there. Okay, I'm good. I'm good with that. Put these little push plugs back in. Oh, that's weird. Huh, whatever. It's in. Alright, so these things, they're pretty easy. I hope. So you take your spring, hook it to the outside. This is going to get hooked in the middle. So I'm in the middle with the spring. And then we'll go through here. You go up the center of the spring. And there's like another. The spring crosses over. So it leaves the whole hook open for you. Very easy. Very nice. Alright. Well, all right, that's what it's supposed to be. We'll see if they're still there when we get to the campground. All right, well, better keep these around. <sighs> Extra pieces there, too. We'll just uh, put it in the box of spare parts. Right along with these zip ties. There we go. All right. Uh, all right. So the foam is fluffing out. It's still not fully fluffed out yet. Um, especially when you get back to the last part, it's still. Uh, here's where I started. Here's where I finished. Still not fluffed out yet. So. Um, here, you guys just wait right here until we're all fluffed out, and then I'll close the door and start running water on it. Alright, I'm not sure where we left off, but what I did is I put this half inch foam all around the edge, bottom two, all the way around. And then I put it around the door too, the top and the sides, and then I stopped it, not on the bottom. And then I put one across the top too, so it could seal up this way. And that's when I found out that this screw was in bad floor, so it was just leaking. So all the water would come down here and leak into this screw hole. Alright guys, I lost some footage, and I repaired this floor, and that's the footage I lost. It was easy. I cut it here, took this sweep plate off. Cut it along all the way here, and then I cut it along this wall. I folded the vinyl back. There's a 2x4 that runs right here all the way across through the camper. So I skill sawed it there. I oscillating sawed it here, and I just replaced one foot of wood with new OSB flooring. 3 quarter inch. Solid. And then I went ahead and did it over here too. So now this kitchen... This kind of stuff right here is all I got to repair now in the kitchen because the floor is done. The leak is found. The door is sealed. Um, this door works right now because we've got the good hinge on there. Uh, 
And that's it. We're here. All right, I got my tripod over here. Let me tripod you guys. Well, all right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. We're at the campground. We're ready for Memorial Day. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.